In this video, I want to show you guys how to do the Momentum Lab, or at least walk you through it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get to it. You're going to um, click on Course Materials, then Content. Then you're going to click on the Momentum Unit and the first link here. And now, just like all the others, I'm going to search this sidebar. I'm going to just go through the pages until I find the lab in the sidebar. Okay, there's some practice problems. More practice problems. Practice problems, here we go, lab. Okay, so it's gonna download down here in um, Chrome, and it's also gonna go in your downloads folder. So I'm just gonna open it up. Now that I've got it up, I'm gonna close this window because I don't need it. I'm gonna click on this um, FET simulation link. I'm going to hit um, download. It's going to download and when it opens, when I try to open it, it's going to say that it won't open it because it's from an unidentified developer. So then I have to go to my system preferences and just um, open it anyway. Now your Mac, if you don't have a Mac, it might look a little differently, um, but you'll still be able to figure it out. Agree and continue. Okay, so Here's our simulation. It says familiarize yourself with the simulation. Um, click on the different options in the data box and see what they do. Right now I just have velocity. Now I've got velocity momentum. Now I've got the center of mass. I'm going to restart it with a momentum diagram. Okay, so now it's showing my kinetic energy. And now it's showing the values for everything. So the values for everything look like that's pretty handy. And then you can also slow the speed down if you want. And then you can change the mass of the um, two different balls. Okay, so um, we can click on more data. And this actually allows us to change our initial velocity for each ball. And then um, you can control the elasticity of the, of the collision um, in this green box. So if it's all the way over here, it's going to be 100% elastic. Over here, it's going to be 100% inelastic. Okay, so we're going to do a perfectly inelastic collision. So we want elasticity all the way at zero. Okay. Then it says use the different masses and initial velocities in the table below to predict the velocity after the inelastic collision. Okay, so it's gonna tell us what our mass and our velocity should be, and then we're gonna fix that. We're gonna put that um, in, the, in the lab. Okay, so we wanna make sure that we wanna um, show values, because that's gonna actually tell us everything. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, the first one, it says, that the mass of the first one is 0.5, the velocity of the first one is 1, the mass of the first one, or the second one is 1.5, and the velocity of the second one is negative 1. Okay, so now I can hit play. And it will go ahead and it will, um, Do it for me. Okay, so um, we can do a predicted final velocity. Um, to do that, you're just going to use your um, your um, conservation of momentum here equation. Okay, I'm going to write it down here for you. It's not going to fit in there. that's going to be um, momentum of the first object plus the uh, momentum of the second is going to equal the momentum of the, well this is your initial of the first and your initial of the second is going to equal the final of the first plus the final of the second. Okay, these are all little subscripts so I'll put those in.
Okay, then um, that equation, you know, then you're going to have your M1 and then your um, V, your initial V of M1. So how am I going to call that? I'm going to call that V1 I plus M2 V2 I Okay. And that's going to show you how and that's your formula. And you see why that wouldn't fit in that little box. Okay, so you just plug those values in. And what's nice is they give you those values right there. So we can move them apart so then we can see them. So then you've got your um, your final, your initial velocity for the first one was zero because they weren't moving. Your initial velocity for the um, second one was also zero because they weren't moving. Then we can do, or, well, they have them here. Negative one. And then we have our final velocity. They're going to be together. They're both going to have a, um, the final velocity of both is going to be equal. It's going to be negative 0.5 meters per second. And then they're actually showing you the momentum of both. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Um, just in case I need it later. Okay. So now I've got all these values here, and then I can just calculate whatever I need. And our experimental final velocity, we can just write that, which we just copied down. We can just write that there in that part of the data table, and then you can do that for the rest. So for all of these, you're going to use that conservation of momentum equation. And then for this, you're just going to copy whatever it has right here in the lab. Okay, now we're going to slide the elasticity all the way to 100. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to have our, four, our trial. So I'm going to restart it. And I'm going to have my mass of 0.5 for the first one. A, um, a velocity of um, 1. I'm going to just reset all just so I can. So 0.5, 1, 1.5, negative 1. Okay, then um, we can have our initial momentum. Um, now it's got um, initial momentum. We're going to have it for the two different um, objects. So we're going to have um, P1I and then P2I. So P1I is going to be 0 0.5. And P2I is going to be negative 
Okay, and then when we run the simulation, we'll be able to get our final momentum. Okay, so then our final momentum of, um, I'm going to copy this here. So I've already got all those subscripts done. So I have to do that all over again. My, um, for my first one, momentum is negative one. And for the second one, the momentum is zero. It was our um, initial kinetic energy. Um, so our kinetic energy formula is just 0.5 mv squared. So you'll do that for um, the first one. And then you'll do that for the second one. Okay, and then you'll do the exact same thing for this one. So these are our initials, so I'll put little I's there to help you, and then I'll put little F's here. Okay, and that's the part you're going to start. You're going to do all that yourself, right? You're going to do those calculations. I've just given you the formula. And then repeat the last step trial for table 2, but set the elect elasticity at 90 or close to 90 if you can't get it exact. So I've got mine at 90. I've got my, um, I'm going to do the mass of the first one is 1, the velocity of 1, 1 1.5, and then my velocity of the second one is negative 1. And now I'm going to start it. I'm going to actually restart it because I forgot to copy down my initial momentum. That's what's nice about these simulations. Instead of doing something like um, a lab in the real world where if you forget, you can just restart it. Okay, and now I can do my final momentums. I'm going to do negative 1.42 and 1.92. And then the same thing, initial kinetic energy, final kinetic, you're going to use those same formulas as above. You will just throw those in there. And then now it's going to ask you the difference between elastic and inelastic. And then it's going to ask you uh, what's the difference where the particles bounce apart in a perfectly elastic collision. Okay. And so that's how you're going to do that lab. And here's your formulas right here, your uh, conservation formulas if you want them. Um, this one is going to be for um, an elastic because you see there they have separate um, final velocities. And this one's going to be for inelastic. Um, so you've got those.